Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I'd like to discuss a common misconception when it comes to what right to repair is. And since right to repair has been featured so much in the news recently, and since Biden just signed an executive order on it, I know that there's going to be a lot of misinformation spread about right to repair to try and scare people into not liking it. And I'd like to try and get in front of that. One of those pieces of misinformation is that what right to repair in the United States is about is making devices look like they're from the 1980s again. A cell phone that is this big, that weighs about five pounds, that has a giant antenna, just so that someone like me can fix it or replace the battery. Or that we want computers to be s bricks that you have to carry around like briefcases again rather than having a nice slim Surface or a MacBook Pro. And that couldn't be further from the truth. So I'm going to read some responses that I made to someone who had this as a concern. And I think it is a valid concern. And I just want to try and get in front of it before large companies start using this to create propaganda. So in this post, and I'll link them down below, someone said, I'm all for right to repair if it means parts, schematics, and tools. I don't want anyone forcing things like removable batteries on us, though. So here's what I posted. I said, excellent concern. I have discussed this before. I do not support a right to repair that forces manufacturers to change how they design the device to this degree. While my personal preference are devices with easily swappable batteries, I don't support legislation that would outlaw the creation of a device where the battery is difficult to access. Many people in this industry have different ideas of what right to repair is, and some most certainly support outlawing batteries that are not easily user replaceable. That's not me, though. Let's take a MacBook screen backlight, for instance. For instance, take an A1181 MacBook. It uses an inverter board for the backlight. It's bigger than my thumb. Take an A1466 MacBook Air. It uses an LP8550 chip for the backlight. This is one-fourth the size of my fingernail. Due to its use of an LED backlight rather than a CCFL, which is fluorescent, and circuit miniaturization over time, it is possible to do away with this bulky, unnecessary component and replace it with something a quarter the size of my fingernail. However, the inverter board is way easier to replace. It's the difference between just popping out a Lego and doing micro BGA soldering in a microscope. Yet, I would not advocate for rolling back technology just to make my life easier. We should not go back to using fluorescent backlit screens simply because it was easier for a user to change the inverter board than a chip that is soldered onto the motherboard. It is not the manufacturer's job to design a product solely to be easy to repair at the expense of everything else. Where I draw the line is when a manufacturer goes over to Texas Instruments or Intersol and says, hey, you know that part responsible for the screen lighting up? Don't sell it to anyone. If someone comes to you and offers you even 50 times what we paid for it, don't sell it to them. Thanks, man. That's not okay. That is monopolistic, anti-competitive, anti-property rights, and should end. That is what my brand of right to repair is for. That is what I advocate for. Same thing when it comes to screen repair. I much prefer how easy it is to change the screen on, let's say, a ThinkPad T520. A few screws and you're done, versus on modern MacBooks where you are stuck taking apart it heat together layers and if you mess up on any of them, the screen looks like crap. Yet figuring out how to do this properly is my responsibility and my job. I do not wish to use the law to dictate to a manufacturer that they design their products in a manner where it is easy for me to service. Where I draw the line is when they knock on the door at LG and Samsung and say they're not allowed to sell me that LCD panel. So I don't mind that screen being difficult to replace. I don't mind the battery being difficult to replace. I don't mind the chips on the board being hard to replace because you've soldered it using micro BGA rather than having a modular part. Where I draw the line is when you say, we're not able to get access to that part. You will most certainly meet people who disagree with me, who believe that devices with non-user replaceable batteries should be outlawed. I just want to make it clear that while I dislike this practice and I would prefer to buy devices where batteries are more easily serviceable, I am not asking any piece of legislation that is drafted or put forward to outright ban the practice. I want the bare minimum necessary to be able to do basic repairs. And someone said, I can see where you're coming from, but honestly, I don't agree. In my opinion, manufacturers should have repairability in mind when designing things. And I said, it's hard to figure out where this ends. Should graphics chips and CPUs no longer be BGA soldered, but be on a socket on the motherboard? How about individual chips? Eight-legged IC chips used to be socketed, so that if a chip died, you could just pull it out of the socket and put a new one in. Now, they're soldered. This would make it easier to replace the chip, but it also means that you get less density in what can go on the board. I don't want to be perceived as a Luddite who wishes for his job to be made easier at the expense of technological innovation, nor is this what I advocate for. I think they should be conscious of repair, but I'm unsure how to write that into legislation without going down a dark road of demanding everything be through hole and socketed. So when people say they just want everything to be as thick as it was in the 80s, you can dismiss that as propaganda. You could dismiss that as someone who has never actually read any of the bills. 
And there was this one gentleman on on a Hacker News recently that said they don't even know what they're advocating for in all these bills because everything is so different. And I pointed out to him that a Senate bill in New York and a House bill in Washington read almost the same. Like they, they, they look like copy and pastes of each other for the most part outside of small little bits of legalese. Another person on Hacker News had said, I would not support anything that added a microgram to my iPhone or MacBook to give up even one tiny feature or even give up one tiny feature to support the fraction of people who can do repairs. I disagree with it being a tiny fraction of people who do repairs. But what I said is luckily nothing I've advocated for will do that. Keep your A1989 MacBook the way it is. Change nothing but this one thing. When it stops charging, let me or you buy an ISL 9240 from mouser.com and let people buy a schematic from Apple instead of waiting for it to get pirated to Venafix or leaked to me by a fan who works at Apple. That's it. That's all. No change to your device's functionality. No change to your device's weight. No change to your device's software. Does that sound fair? I really do want to engage with people who have concerns about what right to repair might do to their devices. I want to learn your concerns, and I want to learn how to ensure that right to repair bills as they are drafted never inconvenience you or lower the quality of the devices you use. I want to learn how to create messaging that makes it clear that that is my goal. So you're going to hear this because I know that since Biden announced this executive order, since this is gaining traction, since the FTC wrote a report going over how everything the manufacturer said is BS, I know that manufacturers are going to say that what we want is for devices to go back to the Stone Age, back when you had a black and white screen, back when your computer that was a laptop had an AC cord that came out the back because they didn't have batteries and was shaped like a briefcase. And that's not true. That's not something I advocate for. In other parts of the world, I know in Europe, they have a brand of right to repair where they say, you must have this charge port on this phone. You must have designed the device in this way. I'm not going down that road because when you open that particular Pandora's box, it's very difficult to figure out where to stop. Why shouldn't the GPU and CPU be socketed? Why shouldn't the individual chips be socketed? It would only make the device a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker. Why not? Why not just get rid of using micro BGA altogether? Why not only use chips that have legs on them? That's not what I'm going for. I'm not going down that rabbit hole because where that rabbit hole ends is a, uh, is a place that is highly complicated and is going to be, ins- it's just insane. What I want to do is I want to undo this one little piece of BS, which is where they go over to the company that makes the part that I need and they say, yeah, I know you have the capacity to manufacture a bunch of these, but just don't sell it to anybody who asked you to buy it. Thanks, bro. That's what we're looking to undo. And I think that's fair. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And if you see someone spreading this type of BS, can you just do me a favor and make sure that you reply to it and explain what we're actually advocating for? There are lots of movements nowadays where they will get co-opted by people who have their own agenda. And they will, uh, or and what people who are against that movement will do is they will point out the worst person or the worst advocate within that movement who's saying the craziest thing and make sure that that voice is amplified above all the others so that nobody is for it. And I, it's really important to me with Right to Repair that what we're asking for be very reasonable, be something that does not inconvenience or damage the consumer's experience in any way. And I think this is very fair. So let me know what you think.